Now we will discuss about the artery supply of the heart. First of all, we make a diagram of the heart. In this diagram, this is superior vena cava, this is inferior vena cava. Here is this is right atrium, this is right arcuate. This is arch of iota. Pulmonary trunk, this is right ventricle, here is left auricle, here is left ventricle. So, in this diagram, you can see here. This is superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. Here is right atrium, right auricle. Here is right ventricle. Here is pulmonary trunk. Left atrium. And expanded part of left atrium. Here is left auricle. And here is left ventricle. This is inferior border of the heart. Here is apex of the heart. This is arch of aorta. Here is from here to here. There is ascending aorta. If you make a diagram of ascending aorta, you will find like this. Here, three cusps are present. This is HDA cusp, here is posterior, this is posterior, it is present on left side, so this is left posterior, this is right posterior. And above this cusp, there is a, this cusp form the tricuspid wall, <coughs> so this is tricuspid wall present right here. We are stable the one. So it has anterior cusp, left posterior and right posterior. And just above the cusp, there is a dilatation known as sinus. Here is, above this, there is anterior aortic sinus, above this, left posterior aortic sinus, above this, right posterior aortic sinus. So if I will make diagram here like this. Here is position of anterior aortic sinus. Anterior aortic sinus. From anterior aortic sinus. Right coronary artery rise. This is right coronary artery rise. It passes between the right auricle and this pulmonary trunk here. And here it runs in a groove. This groove is known as right atrioventricular groove. This is right atrioventricular groove or coronary sulcus. This is right coronary sulcus. So after arising from this anterior aortic sinus, anterior aortic sinus, it passes through. This is anterior aortic sinus, it passes through this right atrioventricular groove. And here at the level of inferior border, this artery turns 
on the diaphragmatic surface of the heart. So this is right coronary artery which arises from anterior aortic sinus passes between the right auricle and pulmonary trunk. Then it passes into right atrioventricular group then it reaches up to the inferior border. From inferior border it turns into the diaphragmatic surface. So this passes to diaphragmatic surface. Now in this course, this gives several branches. First branch of this is the right conus artery. This is right conus artery. Right conus artery. This, this artery is right conus artery. This is the first branch of right coronary artery. Sometimes this right conus directly, uh, directly arises from this anterior aortic sinus along with this right coronary artery. Then it is known as third coronary artery. So sometimes, if this arises from here, anterior aortic sinus, then it is known as third coronary artery. This artery, it has the most width, the branch from here, arises from the left coronary artery. And here this anastomosis for a necklace like structure, elastomotic necklace of infundibulum. This is known as elastomotic necklace of infundibulum. It is also known as annulus of annulus of. Vucens. This is known as endless of Vucens. So, after giving this first branch, it gives other branches. Three or four branches to right ventricle. And one of the ventricular branch becomes enlarged from the marginal artery. So here one branch from the marginal artery. So these are ventricular rami arising from this and one of the ventricular rami which is largest is known as marginal artery. This is marginal artery. And the branches it gives here the branch to here is Jesse known Yes, no. In 65% cases, the yes and no is supplied by a branch from right coronary artery. And about 30% cases, it is supplied by a branch which arises from left coronary artery. So, this is SA node which is supplied by mostly in 65% cases by right branch of right coronary artery. Here and the branches, the atrial branches, you supply to the atrium. After giving these branches, from inferior border, this artery turns, goes to the diaphragmic surface. Here it gives terminal branches. These are terminal branches which anastomose with left coronary artery. Terminal branches of left coronary artery. Before anastomosis, the branches of left coronary artery, it gives a branch which passes into the posterior interventricular group. Here is posterior interventricular group, 
so it passes into posterior interventricular loop. Here it gives branch to ventricle, and here it elastomers with anterior interventricular artery. So on the basis of the origin of the posterior interventricular artery, this artery, posterior interventricular artery. The coronary artery can be divided to two parts on the basis of this right coronary predominance and left coronary predominance. In case of right coronary predominance, this posterior interventricular artery arises from right coronary artery. In case of left coronary predominance, this artery arises from left coronary artery. So in about 70% of cases, this right, this posterior interventricular artery arises from right coronary artery. In about 10% of cases, it arises from left coronary artery. And in about 20% of cases, it arises from both right and left coronary artery. So, and the branch arises from this posterior interventricular artery like this and it gives supply to AB node. So about 80 to 90 percent cases this AB node is supplied by branch, this branch that is posterior interventricular artery which arises from right coronary artery. In 10 to 20 percent cases, it is supplied by this branch which arises from left coronary artery. So, this is all about the right coronary artery. Now, discuss about the left coronary artery. Left coronary artery arises from left posterior aortic sinus. Here, left posterior aortic sinus left posterior aortic sinus here it passes between pulmonary trunk and left atrium here. here it gives two branches and it divides into two parts one is passes through anterior interventricular loop. This is anterior interventricular artery. This turns from here and anastomos with posterior interventricular artery and diaphragmic surface. This is anterior interventricular artery. And the branch. Actually, another branch is a continuation of this artery. This is continuation of this artery. This. This is known as circumflex. So, circumflex branch. This is circumflex branch. Circumflex is continuation of the left coronary artery. And the branch is anterior interventricular artery which turn from the inferior border goes into diaphragmic surface and is most with posterior interventricular artery and the branch is circumflex artery which turns here and passes in left coronary sulcus and anastomos here and diaphragmic surface with the right coronary artery In its course, it gives branches. Here it gives branches. This one is conus branch, left conus branch, which elastomos with this and form the elastomotic necklace of infantibula. And other branches, there is ventricular branch. 
one of the ventricular branch become enlarged and forms this artery this is diagonal artery this artery is diagonal artery this is diagonal artery and this circumflex artery here at the turning point it gives marginal branch this is left marginal artery this artery is left marginal artery left marginal artery so these are the various branches it also gives in 35% cases it gives yes or no branch in 10 to 20% case this ab nodal branch arises from this posterior interventricular artery which may become the branch of this branch of left coronary artery so this is all about the left coronary artery now if you cut a section like this here you will find that this is left ventricle here is right ventricle Here is anterior interventricular artery. This is anterior ventricular artery. Anterior interventricular artery. This gives supply. To left ventricle, most of the part of the left ventricle, and a small part of the right ventricle. Here it gives supply to septum. Here is posterior interventricular artery. This artery is posterior interventricular artery. This gives supply to the septum and a small part of left atrium, left ventricle, and most part of the right ventricle. So this is all about the RTA supply of the heart. In case of obstruction of these vessels, there may be chances of myocardial infarction. In case of the partial obstruction, there may be chance of the angina pectoris. So this is all about the coronary artery and its applied.